Hi guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm Carl Kechanga Sam, as you know, and I'm the resident YouTuber for the VIT Students Physician Society 2021. So we've taken you through what a physician entails, what internal medicine is, and now we are gonna go and delve a little bit more into the intricacies of internal medicine. And in this series, the Physician Subspecialty Series, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going through the different subspecialties of internal medicine and giving you guys a little bit of an idea of what those subspecialties entail. I think you guys have seen me enough on the YouTube channel. So what I've done is I've asked some of my friends in the Physician Society to go out and interview some of the doctors um, in the relevant subspecialties so that you guys can get to know about those subspecialties. So I really hope you enjoy the series, the Physician Subspecialty series. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and comment. We're going to start you off with nephrology and I'm going to see you in cardiology and clinical hematology. Cheers! Is nephrology. Well, nephrology is a subspecialty in internal medicine. So nephrologists are subspecialist physicians mm -hmm. and it really is a discipline which focuses primarily on kidney disease. Although as part of its kind of um, ambit of care, it involves uh, basically looking after a whole range of um, general medicine type problems or, or specific system problems which develop in the context of kidney disease. So it's not just about, for example, somebody who's got nephrotic syndrome, but you will also in the course of your day as a nephrologist deal with, for example, endocrine abnormalities or cardiovascular disease in patients with established kidney disease or on dialysis. And you'll also run patients on immunosuppression who've had a kidney transplant or undergoing treatment for immune disease. So there's a lot of kind of like immunology also involved in it. Yeah. So it's a very widespread um, speciality, but the focus obviously being on um, kidney disease. Which other specialities do you work close with in terms of the multidisciplinary approach? I mean, we do a lot of work with cardiology um, mm -hmm. and we also do some work with rheumatology um, and uh, a lot of work with uh, surgery. So urology, for example, transplant surgery. So a wide kind of range of uh, other specialities are involved in the care of kidney patients. We interact with them on a regular basis. What does a typical day look like for a nephrologist? So typically a very, very long day. Long hours. <laughs> Starts, I mean, one can see in, in nephrology, long hours. I'm on, it's one of the interesting things about um, nephrology is that one can see a, a huge variety of diseases and a, a vast array of um, uh, patients during the course of the normal working day. So, uh, for example, just today I've seen uh, patients on hemodialysis and that's a kind of stable wardrobe just to make sure that they're coping with the dialysis and that they've got no other general medical problems or surgical problems that we need to address. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we've been interacting with one of our transplant recipients and we are um, scheduling and uh, doing workup for some of our patients in terms of getting them on the transplant list. And we have um, other patients who we are dealing with at the moment who've got glomerular disease that are being scheduled for biopsy tomorrow which sure. is again kind of you know an interventional procedure that we do so it's a very kind of uh, disseminated diverse speciality where you'll see a whole range of disease and a whole range of patients during the course of the day what is the work-life balance like um <laughs> poor <laughs> Oh, um, so one of the things about nephrology is that it's um it's a you know it's a kind of in some respects it's an intensive care based discipline so mm -hmm. um, patients who are presenting with significant kidney disease are very ill they have a major organ which isn't working and um that means that you know again in the course of today i've seen some patients in icu who we've had to start on to dialysis so that kind of thing can happen at any hour and yeah. uh, you can be summoned out to the ICU to put up, you know, dialysis lines and stabilize the patient and get them onto dialysis. And similarly, you could be summoned usually in the middle of the night to take a patient out to transplant and run them through the night and get the transplanted organ to work. So um, from that respect, it's, it's a very busy and um, hectic schedule. And because of the shortage of nephrologists in the country, um, it basically means that every single nephrologist in practice has got a huge number of patients that need to be seen. And, and they have a disease which 
is not something that can be delayed being seen until the next yeah. week or until Monday. So if they present in the middle of the night of the weekend, then you must go and see them. Um, because if you don't, obviously the, the kind of outcome may be catastrophic. So from that point of view, the kind of work-life balance isn't the best. It's not perhaps as bad as some of our other colleagues in, for example, intensive care or um, cardiology. So you know, although the nephrologist may be summoned out at two o'clock in the morning to stabilize a patient and start dialysis, that's not quite as bad as being there at two o'clock in the morning as a cardiologist and trying to thread the LAD for a couple of hours while you're wearing kind of full lead uh, armor for the x-ray. So from that point of view, it's not as bad as some, but um, quite a lot worse than others. Yeah. Um, <laughs> where perhaps you have more stable patients and kind of a room-based practice. What is the bread and butter of nephrology in South Africa? And can you give us a brief overview of these conditions? Ah, uh, difficult question. I mean, mostly what we deal with is um, chronic kidney disease of one form of it or another. A lot of chronic kidney disease is diabetic or hypertension or um, HIV related. So again, they're just to return to your earlier question, things that nephrologists need to know about in terms of endocrinology and oh, okay. uh, HIV management. But also we have kind of like um, a glomerular disease. So autoimmune conditions affecting the kidney are not that uncommon. There's obviously a bit of kind of observable selection bias in that because we see a lot of those cases, even though they're relatively rare, because there are so few of us and we're kind of an ultimate referral destination. But a lot of what we do is kind of like um, uh, stabilizing kidney function in patients with chronic kidney disease and trying to extend survival of the native kidneys to avoid dialysis in the long run. Yeah. Um, and then um, obviously once the patient's kidneys have failed, another large component of what we do is to run the patient on dialysis. And that, as I already said, is a quite complicated thing. It's not just prescribing the dialysis itself. It involves also acting as kind of the general physician or even if you want a GP type. Um, a doctor to these patients because they're going to phone you or come to you for basically any complaint from a hangnail through to appendicitis through to whatever major uh, sure. medical problem like a myocardial infarction or a CDA or COVID or something like that. Can you just give um, just a brief overview of how the dialysis works? I mean we have got there are basically two types of dialysis there is um, peritoneal dialysis and then hemodialysis mm -hmm. and the way in which peritoneal dialysis works is we make use of the peritoneal membrane which is, as you know, a membrane that lines basically the um, organs of the abdominal cavity and it's got capillaries in it. And those capillaries um, are, have got kind of a semi-permal membrane which allows us to use the capillaries to create a diffusion gradient. So basically what we do is we instill a fluid into the abdominal space called dialysate fluid. And that fluid, for example, well, that fluid is rich in things like um, calcium and bicarb and low in other electrolytes like potassium and uh, hydrogen and phosphate and so the difference in the kind of concentration of electrolytes and of things like urea between the patient's blood in the capillaries of the peritoneal membrane and the fluid that we're putting into the abdomen to bathe the peritoneal membrane creates a diffusion gradient and in other words a concentration gradient which allows the exchange of toxins like urea and potassium and phosphate um, which are then removed from the patient's blood into the dialysate and the dialysate is then removed and also allows us to put good things into the patient's blood like calcium and um, bicarb. So that's um, peritoneal dialysis. Mm -hmm. And then kind of an extension from that is hemodialysis. And in hemodialysis, what we have is we have a, a artificial membrane, a biosynthetic membrane, in a thing called an artificial kidney, which is outside of the patient. And we, in essence, connect the patient to the artificial kidney using a hemodialysis circuit, which um, pulls blood from the patient and passes it through the dialysis, the, the, the um, the artificial kidney and through that same kind of process because we've generated the diffusion gradient using dialysate uh, relative to the patient's blood we have kind of diffusion of toxins out and good stuff in and we then return the purified blood back to the patient so it's basically both of our purification systems using uh, membranes as filters and the one just relies on the patient's own membrane which is the peritoneal dialysis and the other one is hemodialysis which um, relies on an artificial membrane. So what other joys do you have working in the nephrology department? So I mean there's a couple of ways to answer that. I mean the one thing which I will say about nephrology is that um, you know the science is kind of cutting edge. For me one of the big draw cards was also that um, the way we practice nephrology in this country is no different to the way in which we practice it in say um, the US in Boston or in Harvard or in Oxford. Mm -hmm. So that even, you know, even in South Africa, we're able to practice nephrology on a kind of cutting edge um, level, which is always kind of very exciting because you are required to know so much about um, not only your discipline and the basic science underlying it, but also other people's disciplines like endocrinology and cardiology. 
yeah. and the kind of insight that gives you overall into medicine itself is extremely rewarding. And then, as I also kind of alluded to earlier, it's, it's, it's a nice um, discipline to belong to because of the support from our fellow nephrologists, but I should really say that that also extends to the kind of interaction that you have with nursing staff. Nursing staff in uh, nephrology are pretty unique and kind of are perhaps the, you know, similar to perhaps only nurses in intensive care units is that the kind of level of education or training and insight that the nursing staff have in a nephrology unit is also makes it a pleasure to um, work with um, such skilled people. From a renal side, I mean, obviously if you were to come with me to my private dialysis units, the environment is much prettier, you know, we have yeah. potted plants and wood paneling and all of that kind of stuff and the food is slightly better. <laughs> but the, the, the dialysis machines, we use the prescriptions that we, that we give for dialysis, the drugs that we use yes. to treat um, the patients generally, the, the colleagues that we refer to are basically all the same um, in state and in um, private. I mean, the only difference is that, um, again, because in state we are limited in terms of how many people we can support and we apply what's called transplant eligibility criteria, which is to say that we can really only give you a dialysis slot if we know we can transplant you. Um, in state, our patients tend to be younger and healthier, whereas in private, because that kind of transplant eligibility criteria doesn't really apply, our patients tend to be kind of older and less healthy. Um, but um, as far as the treatment which is received goes, there is no difference between state or private. Yeah, that's very good to hear. Um, thank you so much for your insights. And then just one last question. If one wants to specialize in nephrology, how does one go about it? And can you just work us through your journey of how you got to where you are? Yeah, sure. So, well, what you have to do um, is you, first of all, obviously have to complete your fellowship of the College of Physicians. So you um, become a general physician, that's the FCP. That's a four-year training um, program and uh, during that you obviously required to undertake research and obtain a master's degree in medicine and then you write the college board exams to be certified as a general physician. Mm -hmm. Thereafter you have to um, undertake a three-year training uh, in the sub-speciality and that's for all sub-specialities. You, you in essence spend three years um, sort of as an apprenticeship learning on the job and studying for an exam and your uh, the final exam which you write is called the Certificate in Nephrology, which then makes you a board certified nephrologist and you can then register as a nephrologist um, in South Africa. Mm -hmm. um, and thereafter, you you know, you pursue your, you're, you're free to go and practice, generally most nephrologists then are practicing in the private sector purely because of the shortage of um, uh, nephrology posts in the state sector. But um, those of us who practice in the state will practice it in private as well. And if I might just um, put in a, a brief plug, um, yep. the Division of Nephrology at Helen Joseph is a very kind of like um, is very active in terms of its um, education programs. Um, we have a, a GIMP tutorial which takes place every Wednesday at 10. Um, we would be more than happy for as many people as who as have interest to attend those GIMP tutorials. Um, it's conducted on Zoom, so you can attend from whatever platform you're based at. And perhaps just liaise with your colleagues, I'll be able to give you the link. Okay. We also um, have a, a dedicated registrar tutorial every week, which we are going to take onto Zoom platforms from uh, next week, which or from next month, I should rather say, which again, students are more than welcome to attend. It's obviously slightly a little bit more in depth in the tutorials we give to the games. And we also have a number of um, fellowship tutorials and um, uh, specialized meetings with the rheumatologists and with the histopathologists, which take place on a monthly basis, which also on a Zoom platform. And we would be more than happy for as many people as possible to join those who've got an interest in nephrology. And then just one last thing is that the renal grand ward round, which occurs at half past eight on a Friday at Helen Joseph, is also open to anybody who wants to attend and get a feel for what nephrologists do. We'd be more than happy to see you. Well, thank you so much for informing us about that. Did you know that sneezing with your eyes closed is an involuntary response and it's actually possible to sneeze with your eyes open without having them pop out of your skull? It is just very difficult to do it with, and it would require you to make a concerted effort to keep your eyes open.